Usually on the show, I ask the questions. But today, David Plotz, co-host of the Slate Political Gab Fest and our big boss, CEO of CityCast, is joining us and interviewing me about Portland. Now, he's visited our city a couple of times, but he has some follow-ups. And what are some of these questions? And did I answer them all correctly? I guess you'll just have to wait and see. It's Wednesday, February 1st, 2023. Get ready for our city's daily conversation. I'm Claudia Meza, and this is CityCast Portland. I have been to Portland a couple of times, always quite joyfully. I've eaten incredibly well in Portland. I have walked over several bridges. But honestly, I feel woefully ignorant about uh, your, your great city. And... I would love to to test my ignorance with you and just maybe learn something that I don't know about the wonderful gateway to the West or whatever you your motto. Is. I don't think that's our motto, but I think our motto is more just like, come visit. Don't don't move here. But yeah, I'm excited for you to ask me your questions. I mean, OK, what percent of your income do you spend on coffee? Is it more than 10 percent? Hmm, that's a good question. But here's the deal. Um. Once you've had good coffee, you cannot go back, David. It's like the world is open. Do I spend more than just getting like, you know, a five gallon Folgers from Costco? Yes. Am I going out every day and having a, a barista make me a bespoke a latte? No, no. So I would say roughly 1%. I, and also I'm terrible at math. So that could be a lot of money and I don't know. Um <laughs> But yeah, I don't know if you know this, but we have the second place champ of baristas in the world. And she works here in Portland. And she also won the U.S. Barista Championship. Like she's number one in the United States and number two in the world. So once you have that kind of thing going, you taste some coffee of people who are really dedicated to their craft. It's going to be hard to just go back to Folgers. If I were you, I'd be kind of embarrassed that she couldn't even win the world championship, though. Oh, my God, David. Are you a dad? Are you like, oh, cool B, but uh, there are A's out there for you. Is that who, is that who you I are, David? Dad. I do have three children. Are, are they you'll all to, woefully disappointing them. you? This podcast is not about me. <laughs> okay, it's I'm about sorry. your city. <laughs> all right, let's go on. All right. Sorry. That's okay. So in my experience, people from Salt Lake are always talking about hiking. People from Philadelphia are always talking about the eagles. What is it that <laughs> people true. in Portland will not shut up about? What What are you really boring about? Oh, we hate Californians, which is hard because my family's from California. I'm from California. Um, we might have to cut that out just so people can respect me in this town, even though I've been here for like almost 20 years. But still, we love our sports teams because we have so little of them. So it's just a big deal, like the Timbers, the Thorns, the Blazers. Gosh, I mean... Those are great examples. California, hating people from California is, it seems like a, a real yeah, good one. Seems like that could be a lot of conversation. Specifically Los Angeles. Like, this is the best part. This is what I found out is I went to a Blazers game, David, and I don't even think we were playing L.A., but on the way out, a chant started, and it was like, beat L.A., beat L.A., and I'm like, they didn't even play L.A. I, <laughs> I just don't understand. There's even shirts that say beat L.A., and I just wanted to, like— Tell people, I just like, I just want you to know that in Los Angeles, no one has a beat PDX <laughs> shirt. Nobody gives a crap. Uh, hating umbrellas also, which is weird uh, because they're wonderful piece of technology. Um, just getting wet in general, just being really proud and wet. Actually, that PDX thing reminded me of one of my other questions. Why PDX? Why do you call yourselves after an airport? I think that it's just easier to say PDX than Portland. Also, it sounds cool. Like anytime there's an X Anywhere, I think that you sound slightly like you could maybe beat somebody up. And yeah. I feel like PDX yeah. just sounds tougher than Portland. That's really smart. Love it. Uh, how much garden peer pressure is there in Portland? My main experience of Portland is, wow, these gardens are amazing. What if you are just somebody who doesn't want to cultivate seven different kinds of peony or who doesn't have the patience to create your own species of lichen? Will your neighbors shame you? What a niche thing to notice when you're in town. But that's awesome. I think it's the rain, David. I think it's because we have so much rain. I mean, you really cannot not have a garden. 
Because birds will just poop out seeds in your front yard. The rain's going to come there. And then once spring comes, you're just like, look at my beautiful roses. I never planted roses. I have roses and I didn't plant them, you know, and they just come up and you're just like, cool. Once that starts happening and you realize how kind of easy it is, you just sort of get into it. That and like, you will turn into a hippie once you move here, no matter how cool you are. You're just going to be like, I want to grow my own food, you know, fuck the man. I'm going to grow my own peonies that could be it but that thank you that's actually a really cool compliment i never noticed that i just always noticed how green we were you know there's green oh everywhere, it's so but. impressive it's i remember walking in some neighborhood i don't remember which one and just each garden more glorious than the next that's so cool do, hmm. do you take a sick day if it's sunny is it ever sunny <laughs> you're like making me break down i'm just like oh son i wish um do we take a sick day? No. Do we force our coworkers? Is it a common thing in the Portland Slack thread? At like, hey guys, the sun's out. I, we demand that everyone take a walk. Yes, yes, that happens because the sun is fleeting in the winter. But when it is here, it's awesome because our days are longer in the summer. Most people don't know that how north we are. <laughs> like we're really high up, and so we have sun sometimes until like nine, which is crazy. So we get all the sun in the summer, and then we get 4 p.m. sunsets. So <laughs> that's what happens. Okay, I want to continue in this theme. So I know two things about Portland. One is that it rains all the time. Two is that everyone is biking all the time. Those two things are mutually incompatible. Which one is more true? Both. This is why we earn that X in PDX. We don't give a fuck. And we love being, we're proud and wet. Like, that's... No umbrellas. Here's the deal. Once you are sealed up in a like proper biking and all weather uniform, you know, your hoodie and your hands, it's actually kind of fun. You know, if the rain isn't coming at you towards your face, which sucks, that's not fun. But if it's like, you know, towards your back or whatever, it's not that bad. Is is Portland the kind of city where you all pretend to use public transit, but actually drive everywhere because everyone in the West drives everywhere? No, we use, we actually, the stats out that like 30% of Portlanders don't even have cars, which is a pretty large percentage um, for a city as sprawled out as ours. That's genuinely impressive. I was all prepared to make fun of you, to think you were just like people from Phoenix, but. Yeah, you're gonna have to come up with a new question <laughs> to poke um, fun at us. I'm sure you will. Oh, yeah. So one of the things <laughs> I've noticed about the several people from Portland I've met is that they are super thin skinned about Portlandia. Mm, Why yeah, do you yeah, hate yeah. it so much? Oh, my God. I'm so glad you asked. And there's many levels to this. And I wish I had like a like a little whiteboard. Okay, one. Listeners, Claudia has a whiteboard, an elaborate okay. whiteboard. <laughs> I'm going to go from like the most petty to like, I think the biggest reason. So one, um, it's just not that funny. Two it made everyone think that's what it was. And so it's annoying when people come and they're like, oh, and you're like, no, it's a TV show. It was written for fun, you know? Um, the three, it made people move here, which if you remember, our motto was visit, don't move here. So that was annoying. But the, the biggest thing I think that really were just like, it really annoyed people is that it did drastically change uh, not just the perception, but the expectations of when people moved here, what they thought the city should be. And so a lot of them are complaining about things that Portland always had. Like we always had crime. We always had, <laughs> Portland has been like a pretty gritty city. We are a little like gruff port town. And a lot of people came wanting all these things. And I'm not saying like some of the stuff that came up like brunch or whatever, but it was exaggerated for mm, comedy. I'm going to just put this out there. Portlandia teamed up with Zillow and they were selling houses. I mean, I'm not, this isn't like some like tin hat conspiracy. <laughs> it's true. It's what happened. There was product placement of Zillow. And like, again, <laughs> cardinal sin, people were moving here because of Portlandia and then wanting that, which is not what we are, it is an exaggeration, like sweet version, twee version of something that it's not. That's how much people from Portland hate Portlandia. Did I answer your that question, answer David? That answer was so much better than I expected. And you're, the amount of, of, of submerged, not that submerged rage there was 
Amazing. I'm really mad now, but it's okay. <laughs> Let's be fun again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was fun. That was that was plenty fun. All right, I need to cool down. <laughs> Let's take a little break here. When we come back, my boss continues asking me more questions about Portland. Turning to a slightly grimmer subject, a couple of years ago, it seemed like, in fact, it didn't seem like it apparently was, that there was a riot in Portland every night for months, or at least there was just like some sort of action. I don't mm-hmm. know what was happening. I don't know who was doing what. Just the quick summary for those of us who just weren't there and didn't pay attention. Don't have to go deep, just quick. Oh, sure. Well, it's just so one thing. It was like a square city block downtown. That's where it would happen. It wasn't like all over. Occasionally, the marshes would come through um, to certain neighborhoods, but it wasn't as overwhelming in the city as the national media portrayed it. And to be honest, most of the city supported it. There were, it's great. I mean, that's Portland. People were going out there. There was a literal wall of moms, and that's what they were called. And it was mothers out there making sure that people were safe. And then the, the wall of dads came, and they came out with their um, leaf blowers to push out the gas that they were oh, throwing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And these weren't like Antifa. These weren't, no, it was like people who worked at Nike and like Intel. And again, it's because it was literally a city block. And a lot of the stuff that they were asking for uh, made sense. Did so, they get yeah. It? Well, David, that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> yeah. Did they get it? I don't think so. Like the defunding of the police, it, it was like their budget was more than it has been for the last five years. So I don't know what got, de- what got defunded, but we did get certain city movement in things that we were hoping to push for, like mental health services, where if someone's having a mental health issue or breakdown, they don't send the police, they'll send this group. And that's still getting worked out. So, I mean... Denver did that. The CityCast Denver did a great episode about how they did that in Denver. And it's it's been incredibly successful in Denver. Yeah, it's... Here's the deal. <laughs> here's the thing about Portland leadership. Hopefully, because of our charter, I don't know if you heard about this, um, but we don't have representatives of like neighborhoods and districts. We just have people that get voted in and then they take over departments that they know nothing about. So like one person will be in charge who's who has no background on this for the fire department or the police. And so it's it's a little wonky. And I feel like it's how a small town would work, but we're too big for it now. So hopefully now that we have representatives that are actually going to be addressing neighborhood issues, we might have more action as opposed to just like what I just told you, like, eh, I don't know, maybe. So another thing I think I know about Portland is that you have a lot of anarchists. Like when you live in Washington, D.C., you don't meet a lot of anarchists. Do you meet a lot of anarchists? <laughs> How do they dress? How do you know they're an anarchist? Do they just not obey the parking sign or stop signs? Well, I don't or think you, that's or... what anarchy is, David. I mean, do you know what anarchy is to begin with? Let, let's talk about that. What is anarchy to you, David? No, the, again, oh. the, I'm asking the questions here. Oh, yeah, but, I'm asking, <laughs> but I, I want to answer your question. But before I can answer your question, I want to know I, like, what you mean by who, anarchy. Or who self-identify as anarchists, who believe essentially that most of the institutions of government, big institutions of society oh, gotcha. should be eliminated, broken down. Uh, minimized, that that st- all structures should exist as close to the grassroots as possible insofar gotcha. as there are structures. Well, with that definition, I feel like we probably have as many anarchists as like rural Montana. But um, yeah, I, I definitely feel like people do identify as anarchists. They're not like actively plotting to bring down the government. I think they're growing gardens. <laughs> I think they're I think they're the ones that are making all those flowers you like. All right. Are there any famous people from Portland? Have you heard of uh, Matt Groening, the creator of The Simpsons? He was, he's from Portland. He's born and raised in Portland. That's what, I don't know if you've ever watched The Simpsons, but Flanders, that's a street. Have I never watched The Simpsons? Have you ever, David, (laughs) have you ever watched The Simpsons? Am I a human being? Do I not breathe? Here's the deal. Here's the deal. This is a generational thing because I grew up watching The Simpsons, but- our audio producer, she's 23, and I'm just giving her gold. I'm giving her some, like, really great Simpsons, like, jokes or references, and she has no idea what I'm talking about ever. 
because people stopped watching The Simpsons. Well, I'm a million years old. So I watched The Simpsons. <laughs> I watched season one of The Simpsons in college. It was so hot. Anyway, uh, Matt Groening. <laughs> Matt so Groening. So hot. Matt, Matt Groening. Um, so many. Who else? Born and raised or just like from here? You, you can... I'll accept whatever. You've named one person. So uh, any, <laughs> anything, anything to move us forward. Somebody who visited once. The guy, the guy who founded Nike, you know. Phil Knight. Phil Knight. Phil Knight. He's from here. Uh, nice. I keep looking for like a lifeline for my producer <laughs> in the interview. And it's just a little cursor that's like, mm, mm, like nothing. Cool job, John. Thank you. Oh, my God. Duh. Ursula K. Le Guin. Come on. Oh, Yeah. Come on. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess there's more. Yeah. But, okay. So there's also Beverly Cleary. You Beverly know? Cleary. I thought she was. Yes. Yeah. The books yes. take place. The Ramona books take place in Portland. Yeah. And also, um, who's the writer of that book, Fight Club? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, Chuck Palooniak. You got it. You win, David. And also, uh, Gus Van Sant. Antonio, <laughs> Antonio Harding. You heard of Tony Harding? That's right. That's a great list. <laughs> it's a great list. <laughs> Thank you. I feel like, oh, Danny Glover lives here. Wait, Dan, the Danny Glover of uh, Lethal Weapon? Oh, <gasps> John, thank you. I didn't know that. Probably not allowed to carry a lethal weapon in Portland, though. Oh, my God. Danny Glover lives here. This is exciting stuff. All right. Claudia, this is so great. I have learned gardens just grow. You don't have to do anything. Portlandia provokes an immense amount of rage in any Portlander. You Mainly, actually yes. are really great at biking. You're really good at public transit. And you're not hypocrites about it the way everyone else is. And there's so many incredible famous people from Portland. It's so many. Incredible really impressed. Famous. I'm really impressed. I think I'm going to move there. No, you really shouldn't. I think, no. I think that's, it seems like it's a city that's really welcomes people who want to move there. No, I just think you, sh you should come visit us sometime. No, I think I'm going to move there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this interview's done. <laughs> and now for your micro dose of news. A few pandemic era safeguards for renters could be coming back. If you remember during the pandemic, Oregon passed temporary laws to protect people from being evicted. Now, those rules expired last year, but the legislature is considering extending some of those protections. If the bill passes, tenants could get a 60-day delay on eviction for failing to pay rent if they've applied for rental assistance. And sneakerheads, mark April 5th on your calendar. That's the day you can see Ben Affleck play Nike co-founder Phil Knight on the big screen. The movie is called Air, and it will tell the story of how Knight signed a deal with Michael Jordan. Now, if you're wondering who's playing MJ, well, there's some bad news. Apparently, Jordan won't be portrayed in the film at all. I mean, the entire premise of the film is about the creation of the Air Jordan brand. If Ben Affleck dunks once in this film, I'm filing a lawsuit. I don't know for what, but I'll figure it out. For more local news and events, sign up for our daily newsletter, Hey Portland. We'll throw a link in our show notes. That's all for today here on CityCast Portland. If you enjoyed the show, share it with a friend, rate it, or leave us a review. You know the drill. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more from around the city. Until then, see you at Slim's. <laughs>